Hello, Group J. Happy to be reading to you again. Um, it is a beautiful day here in Northampton, and so I thought I would sit out on my deck and read to you, and I just want to show you someone <laughs> found the sunny spot. Very cute, me. All better, by the way. She was she had a little surgery, but she's all better now. Okay. So we are going to be reading a book that has characters in it that you will recognize. It is called Mercy Watson to the Rescue by Kate DiCamillo, and the pictures, the illustrations are by Chris Van Dusen. Do a little bit of this if you, maybe you know this book already, maybe you know some of these characters. You definitely have heard two stories by this author. Um, and I'm pretty excited. I've actually never read this one. I've read other Mercy Watson books, but I thought this would be a nice way to start our lunchtime read aloud time. You don't have to listen to it while you're eating lunch. You can listen anytime you like, but I just thought that um, it'd be kind of a fun one to start with. Okay, the dedications are, well, there's a big pile of toast on a plate, and Kate, the author, is dedicating it to Allison McGee, who likes her toast with a great deal of butter. And Chris Van Dusen, the illustrator, is dedicating it to Guggy with love. It's G-U-G-G-Y. It could be Googie, but it's probably Guggy. Chapter One. Mr. Watson and Mrs. Watson have a pig named Mercy. Each night they sing Mercy to sleep. Bright, bright is the morning sun, said, sang Mr. and Mrs. Watson. But brighter still is our darling one. Dark, dark is the coming night, but oh, our mercy shines so bright. This song makes Mercy feel warm inside, as if she had just eaten hot toast with a great deal of butter on it. Mercy likes hot toast with a great deal of butter on it. But when Mr. and Mrs. Watson kiss her good night and turn off the light, Mercy's room becomes very dark. Oops, sorry, it says becomes dark, very dark. And Mercy does not feel warm and buttery toasty inside anymore. She feels afraid. Ooh. By the way, friends, this is something we would notice in the classroom. Notice that the page numbers are in little pieces of toast. One night, after Mr. and Mrs. Watson sang their song about the sun, kissed Mercy goodnight, and turned off the light, Mercy decided something. She decided that she would be much happier if she wasn't sleeping alone. And so Mercy got out of her bed and went and got in bed with Mr. and Mrs. Watson. She snuggled up between them. Mercy felt warm inside, as if she had just eaten hot toast with mm -hmm, a great deal of butter on it. Chapter two. Mr. Watson and Mrs. Watson and Mercy were all in bed together. They were all dreaming. Mr. Watson was dreaming of driving a very fast car. Vroom, said Mr. Watson in his sleep. Vroom, vroom. Mrs. Watson was dreaming of buttering hot toast for Mercy. <laughs> she buttered one piece and then another piece and then another. Have some more, dear, Mrs. Watson said in her sleep. Eat up! Yum, yum! Mercy was dreaming about hot buttered toast, too. <laughs> in Mercy's dream, hot buttered toast was piled high on her favorite blue plate, and Mrs. Watson was buttering still more. It was an excellent dream. <laughs> Mr. Watson said, vroom, vroom! Mrs. Watson said, have some more, dear. Mercy snuffled and chewed in her sleep. Mr. Watson and Mrs. Watson and Mercy were all so busy sleeping that they did not hear the bed creak. They were all so busy dreaming that they did not hear the floor moan. Hmm. What does it mean for a floor to moan? Can floors actually make a moaning sound? I wonder what you think about that. We'll read one more chapter. The chapters are pretty short. Maisie is intently listening to the story. Chapter three. Boom! A hole opened under the Watson's bed. Crack! The Watson's bed fell into the hole. Mr. Watson woke up. Mrs. Watson woke up too. 
Mercy woke up too. What the, said Mr. Watson. Oink, said Mercy. Sometimes I want to read that like the word oink, but sometimes I just want to go You can do whichever you want. If you hear me say oink, you can make the pig sound at home. It's an earthquake, shouted Mrs. Watson. It's the end of the world. Nonsense, said Mr. Watson, but he did not sound very sure. He sounded frightened. Mercy, however, was not frightened. Mercy was hungry. Oink, said Mercy again. She moved to the end of the bed. Boom! Crack! The bed fell a little farther into the hole in the floor. Don't move, shouted Mr. Watson. Whatever you do, don't move! Mr. Watson and Mrs. Watson and Mercy held very still. Mrs. Watson started to cry. I know exactly what we must do, said Mr. Watson. We must call the fire department. They will rescue us. But you said we should not move, said Mrs. Watson. How can we call the fire department if we cannot move? Mercy recalled her lovely toast-filled dream. She wondered if there was any toast in the kitchen. While Mr. Watson and Mrs. Watson were arguing, Mercy hopped off the bed. Can you read those words? Boom! Crack! Look, said Mr. Mrs. Watson, Mercy has escaped! She is going to find help, said Mr. Watson. She is going to alert the fire department. Mercy left the bedroom at a gallop. She was in a hurry. She was on her way to the kitchen. She was looking for some toast. <laughs> okay, that is the end of those three chapters for today. And I, oh, I'll give you a little hint about chapter four. The first word is in. That's your big hint. Okay, my friends, I'm excited to read more to you tomorrow. I hope you're enjoying this beautiful sunny day. Let's check in on Maisie one more time. Yep. Still oh, putting her head down. Is she not the sweetest thing? This is also making me want buttered toast, so I might need to go have some of that right now. Okay, bye.